to pickle them and carrot to steam or cream them. In making the original French fried potato, cut them in thick slices. Put them one on top of each other, cross cut the slices and you'll never eat a French fry any other way. The potato cut like this will not absorb the fat because they're garnished around. Pineapples cut for your pineapple and cheese salad, cut them the same way. Here is one and this is a dandy. Cuts any thickness or any size. Open it for a thick slice, close to the top for a thin slice. Saratoga chips, you can make them for three or four pennies a pound. Just pull the blade towards you like this. If you want the slices thicker than this, open the blade, there's a thick slice. Shoe strings for your Friday fish dinner, cut them down like this. Chop them up for your vegetable soup. What this knife is really intended for is for cutting the cabbage. You know the old fashioned board, how you rip and tear, sometimes nipping the ends off your fingers. Lay it flat and pull it lightly towards you over the cabbage. The weight of the knife across the cabbage is all that's necessary. Why, ladies, when you get slaw cut as fine as this, you'll certainly appreciate eating it. The crowning feature of the set is the cutter that I'm going to show you now. This is known as the Champine Vegetable Mincing Knife and Noodle Cutter. Now, when you want to make some real fine noodles at home, you roll the dough out like this. Dip this into a little flour so it doesn't stick to the dough, and as you roll it over the dough, that will cut the noodles in long strips ten at a time. Did you ever try to chop up the little nuts for cake? Well, I've seen ladies chop nuts and the nuts land up on the ceiling. Sometimes you chop the ends off your fingers. When you want to chop up a little nuts for cake, cooked meat, clams for chowder, soup greens to throw into your soup, making a little pepper or chicken hash is just a few strokes rolling it up and down. Why, here is without a doubt the meanest thing in the world to cut parsley. Put that in a grinder. You really grind it too fine. This machine, instead of crushing the parsley, cuts it quick, clean, and dry, leaving every bit of the juice and every bit of the flavor. Now, to clean this machine, you press the button. Rinse it out in a little water. When you're through using it, hang it up and let it dry. Here's one here that every lady should have in her home, known as the Parisian scoop. You lay it flat. Once to the right, once to the left. When you scoop them out, you'll get a perfect round little ball. You can pot roast these. Cut them out of cheese or cut them out of butter. When you're serving a fruit cocktail in the summertime, take your fresh cantaloupe, scoop them out like this, mix them with apples, pears, and watermelons, makes a delicious fruit cocktail served with a little cracked ice like you see here. But here are the two ladies, if you ever do get it, you'll thank the day you've seen this demonstration. When you press, it locks. It's like a pair of human hands. Reach in the oven and take the biscuits out of the oven. Ever take the hot potatoes out of the oven and burn yourself on the elbow? A roast chicken out of the oven, a piece of meat out of the pot, spinach, asparagus out of the water, why around canning season when you're preserving the fruits, to take the hot fruit jars out of the water like that? That machine is worth dollars to you. And here's another one that I really know you'll enjoy having in your kitchen, known as the safety grader. No doubt you're familiar with the old-fashioned grater. I've seen ladies take a grater and rip the knuckles off. When you want to grate up potatoes for delicious potato pancakes, this has a smooth, flat edge, impossible to cut yourself. Just like you were washing clothes, you rub it up and down, and you really grate your vegetables real fine, retaining all the flavors and all the juices. Bread crumbs for your for when you're serving veal cutlets or anything like that. You want a little bread crumbs to fry your fish in? Well, there's the greatest proposition in the world. Use that for coconut, cheese, or horse ready. When you're through with it, just hit it down like that. That knocks all the food out. Rinse it out in a little water and hang it up and let it dry. 
Now, here is a stone made of carborundum and sapphire quartz, which is made purposely to keep these knives sharp. When they get dull, a few strokes over the edge like this, and you can put a keen cutting edge on it. If you have a dull knife or a dull pair of scissors, an old sickle or a sigh, a lawnmower, cleaver, an axe, there's a tool that will really put an edge on the knife so the knife will really cut for you. I just want to give you an idea of how sharp that knife really is when you sharpen it with that stone. Ladies, I've seen some of you try to open up cans. Now, there's a can of Campbell's baked beans. I've seen ladies open up a can and you poke a hole in it, go around the top, hippity hop, and your finger slips. Let me show you a real proposition. Look, lay it on the can. Lift up the safety and turn the key. That locks itself on the can. No harder than you were winding up your watch. Wind up the key and that'll cut the top off of the can slick and smooth. Notice how the end raises itself up in the air so you can lift the lid off, giving you a clean, smooth edge. Now that can be used for sardine cans, square cans or round cans, exactly the same way. Now this tool here, my dear friends, needs no introduction. This will save you on an average of 20 to $30 every year you use it as a peeling knife. Here's a grater for cheese, coconut, or horseradish, a fish scaler for scaling your fish, and when you're coring your apple, it's just a slight twist of the wrist, and there's the apple core. There's one more tool that I want you to see, and I want you to watch this one very closely. Many a times when you're baking a pie, you have a pudding in the oven. I've seen ladies wrap a towel around your hand, and many a times you burn your fingers. Hook this onto the pot like this and lift the hot pots off the top of the stove. You've got a pie pan in the oven? Get a hold of the pie pan like this. Why, you couldn't get it off with a team of horses. This will positively lift 100 pounds. There's a pail of water weighs 50 or 60 pounds. That's the way you pick it up. But there's one more tool. I'll be all through and I'll be finished. Oh, now the next tool and the last one is what they call the Sarah Bernhardt cutter. This was invented by the head chef of the Imperial Hotel in the city of Berlin, Germany. You place the screw into the center of the vegetable. Twist the vegetable until the threads catch a hold. Then you wind this up. You keep winding until you utilize the whole potato. The faster you turn, the quicker the slices. Why, ladies, here's a machine for slicing onions. The first onion that you slice with this cutter, you bless the day, you've got a hold of it. Every slice cut exactly the same thickness. Every slice cut the same size. In making what they call a rosette, pull the vegetable out like this. Pin the ends together with a toothpick. Drop that potato into the hot fat and fry it. That will come out like a donut golden brown. If you're serving a nice fish dinner, a little parsley goes in the center with the fish all around it, makes a very appetizing dish. Did you ever try to slice onions with a knife? You know how you get one thick slice and one thin slice? Run the knife through the center. That will separate each slice individual. Almost like magic, there is every slice cut exactly the same thickness and the same size. Wouldn't you like to have a set like this in your kitchen? Why, of course you would. Now, don't forget, attend this theater every week and receive this 12-piece fascinating... Ladies and gentlemen, the management of this theater takes great pleasure in making this announcement. To each lady attending this theater each week, you'll receive absolutely free a fascinating 12-piece kitchen cutlery set, one piece each time. It is really interesting and amazing to know how you can prepare your meals 
in an appetizing and pleasing manner. There's an old saying and a true one that what is pleasing to the eye is bound to be pleasing to the appetite. I'm going to demonstrate this set to you and I want you to watch it very closely. The first cutter that I'm going to show you, now this first one is known as the Parisian cutter. Wind it through the potato like a corkscrew. When the cutter appears on the opposite side, pull the cutter out. Place the handle in the center and twist it out. This is what they call a French curl. When you fry these, they come out like doughnuts, nice and brown. Serve them with your steaks or pot roast them. Unwind it, there's two curls out of the one potato. Tomorrow morning for breakfast, Wind a little strip of bacon around the potato and serve them with bacon and eggs. They're delicious. Different colored vegetables, wind them together and you get the two colors. Here's a little trick cut. Split the curl halfway through the center. If you're making a shrimp salad and you happen to run short of shrimp, mix these in with the regular shrimp. On my word, you couldn't tell the difference until you start to eat them. Now the rest of the potato, you stuff it. We'll call this a little chicken. We'll call this here some hamburger. You might have a little meat that's been laying in the ice box for a few days. Chop the meat up fine, season it highly, stuff it into the center of the potato and bake them with the skins on. When they're done, cut them in two. Serve them on the half shell just like that. Serve them in slices when company calls. The more company you have, the thinner you cut the slices. If your mother-in-law calls, give her a beak piece like that. Now the second tool in the set is known as the garnishing knife. Everything you cut with this must come out fancy. Watch this please. You cut down, you turn the potato and then you cut through the edge. First one way and then the other. Sweet potatoes cut like this. Drop them into a little batter of pancake flour and fry them. When they're golden brown, sprinkle molasses on them. Serve them with strips of bacon for breakfast while they're delicious. Here's beet, you pickle them, and carrot, you steam or cream them. In making the original French fried potato, cut them in thick slices. Put them one on top of each other, Cross cut the slices and you'll never eat a French fry any other way. The potato cut like this will not absorb the fat because they're garnished around. Pineapples cut for your pineapple and cheese salad cut them the same way. Here is one and this is a dandy. Cuts any thickness or any size. Open it for a thick slice, close to the top for a thin slice. Saratoga chips you can make them for three or four pennies a pound. Just pull the blade towards you like this. If you want the slices thicker than this, open the blade, there's a thick slice. Shoestrings for your Friday fish dinner, cut them down like this. Chop them up for your vegetable soup. What this knife is really intended for is for cutting the cabbage. You know the old fashioned board, how you rip and tear, sometimes nipping the ends off your fingers, lay it flat and pull it lightly towards you over the cabbage. The weight of the knife across the cabbage is all that's necessary. Why, ladies, when you get slaw cut as fine as this, you'll certainly appreciate eating it. The crowning feature of the set is the cutter that I'm going to show you now. This is known as the Champagne Vegetable Mincing Knife and Noodle Cutter. Now when you want to make some real fine noodles at home, you roll the dough out like this. Dip this into a little flour so it doesn't stick to the dough, and as you roll it over the dough, that will cut the noodles in long strips ten at a time. Did you ever try to chop up the little nuts for cake? Well, I've seen ladies chop nuts and the nuts land up on the ceiling. Sometimes you chop the ends off your fingers. When you want to chop up a little nuts for cake, cooked meat, clams for chowder, soup greens to throw into your soup, making a little pepper or chicken hash is just a few strokes rolling it up and down. Hello everyone, how we doing tonight? Welcome in Charland. 
and uh, Leo Zio, welcome in. Uh, glad to have you both. Uh, as I was trying to say earlier, uh, we are starting about an hour late compared to usual. Um, so Leo Zio, you can expect me to start a little bit earlier usually. I had a, uh appointment earlier and ran a little bit late for me to start my normal time. So, uh, yeah, bacon. Homemade stuff, which means I can do fun things, like cut it like this. You think that's an appropriately thick slice? I hope so, because I'm going to turn it into lardons. Lardons. We'll do that once more. You just want the rest of this as one slab, Leo? If you're drinking, you might actually, because you want that fat to counteract the alcohol in the morning. Fat and water. No worries, Leah. So I start off by rendering these guys. <laughs> we got it started in a high heat here but i'm gonna quickly turn this down to a very low heat because we're gonna cook these a little bit help break down them, them down a little bit before we uh get into completely crisping them and we also want some oil and or some fat released from these so that they actually like really crisp up here for our soup we want some really big beautiful hunks of bacon here all crispy and yummy so i'm actually going to turn that way down low now below a boil actually, but just barely below a boil. If that was all water. I know at a point I can turn my burner on to get it to just barely steadily hold a boil. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm just below that point. I gotta throw this out, I'll be right back. <laughs> Leo, uh, I don't really want to judge right now. I'm just cooking for myself at home. So now we'll do a more reasonable, normal slice of bacon here. We'll do two of those for our sandwich later. The rest of that we're going to throw back in the fridge, but we're going to do it in a new clean bag. Have neither a judge nor a roommate.
Hey, car guy. Welcome in, Shelly Music. Yeah, we're doing bacon. We're doing peas. That, that classic combo. And I'm going to do a sandwich with some of our garlic bread from yesterday. And uh, these slices of bacon. And I'm going to also uh, add in there, I've got some Italian cold cut. And we'll do an egg on top of that with some uh, uh, little greenage. But right now we're getting started with the soup because it's going to take, well, it's also, it's going to take the longest, but it's also the most flexible in getting started. But I guess we can also cook, the, well, it's a bit early to get going with that other bacon. So we're just going to set this aside for now. Clean up the knife. Yep, car guy. Tomorrow night is going to be, uh, the, the vote went almost entirely to KFC. So I'm, I'm doing foods made with KFC extra crispy chicken as an ingredient. And so I'll be buying it and then using it as an ingredient rather than... I'm not gonna just have fried chicken dinner tomorrow. Although, sorta am at the same time. Yeah, Leo Zio, I have a weekly uh, vote going on. We'll start a new vote on Wednesday. And that's in the Discord. And so that'll be uh, the next week's one. So each Wednesday I do Ingredient challenge put forward by you guys. I think, car guy, next time you make bread, you should substitute, you don't, you don't want to use flour. It, it's not going to work for you. Um, I'm, I'm going to suggest you use uh, lemon pulp. That, that stringy, bitter white part to the lemon be great for making your bread out of. I'm already starting to develop some ideas. In fact, I've already got got the dessert, I think, pretty much figured out um, and ordered. Um, I'm actually a little bit more in a question of what I'm doing for the main course using the chicken. Welcome in, Huberman. How you doing tonight? I usually throw that up in the morning on Discord Car Guy after I have all the ingredients for sure and know for sure what I'm doing. That actually sounds sort of interesting. Well, not cinnamon toast, but you could certainly put the chicken skin in um, waffle mix. Yorkshire puddings and Brussels. Love Brussels. Roast beef dinner, nice, nice. But Yorkshire pudding, it, it that's something I've only had a couple of times. Oh, that's what I'm talking... I, I, I don't have everything but car guy. And I'm not going to sit here and promise you guys things and not be able to come up with the ingredients. I 
Oh, so it's early. No problem. Wait, you stay up until, like, what, four? <laughs> I'm, like, barely awake ever after 11. So, I mean, I'm completely kidding. I'm such an old man. I may not be that old, but I'm an old man. I might have been more like that in, like, college. Or younger. But it's true on one hand, Leo Zio. Yeah, I certainly do wish that I could freeze time every now and then. I probably won't go too complicated, car guy. It's going to be my first time trying to do bagels here at home. And so I honestly haven't even started looking at plans or recipes or how I want to approach it. But, um... Yeah, it, it's going to be my first time trying to do bagels at home, so. I'm not going to go after some specialty style or something with it. I am going to hit these with a bit of salt. Salt's not great on the pan, but live with it. I've only done a couple of savory pancakes, Huberman. Um, I've, I've done chaffles at least once. I did chaffles last year once. I think it was like early in the year too. Or maybe that was late last year or two years ago. I got decent hunk of it still. I cured this bacon. Um, this is one of two or three other slabs I've got on freezer and it's not smoked so it's not full bacon it's more cured belly but um it's part of the whole pig that i broke down in june we're working on the last couple of big pieces of that here and there's some bacon left i got the tenderloin in there i think i've got another shoulder in there or actually, I think I've got a butt in there. <laughs> Bacon is a beautiful thing. Um, let's see. Where are we going from here? We're going to need... That's all got to wait for the bacon. Um... Let's chop up an onion, do a little garlic. We'll use that for our soup. My day today. Rather uneventful. Meeting resulting in probably more meetings. 
other than that. Sure, Leo. See how we're doing here with our Stream Raiders battle. Oh, it's ready to go. And hey, I don't even have a character out there. <laughs> Metro's out there by himself with two his two rogues. Aww. Well, we'll go at that one again. I'll maybe uh Put one of my own characters on the field this time. <laughs> Sorry about that. There we go. So you guys can feel free to join in and add your own characters to the battle. Next battle will run here in 30 minutes. Links there in chat. Oh, I don't know. Car guy. There was a couple of good ones. A couple of great ones. Fish and chips was great. The uh, several of the stews were great. Several of the pies were great. Probably Huberman. Processed meats are processed meats. I mean, they're probably high sodium, but then again, so is my cooking. Um, and, yeah, that's, I'll leave it there. I'm not a health expert, though. I mean, I've taken courses and I know some, but I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm an authority to tell you guys.
That's quite a bit of an onion. That might be more than we need here for our soup. not bad. Um, it's a good combo. I'm going to be using chicken stock. But, I mean, if you got bacon like that, why... <laughs> Oops, that was a little too crushed. Uh, lentils I'm mostly gonna puree up. I'm not gonna put them in the blender, but I am gonna put my stick blender in there, I think, and give them a whip up. And the, the peas will be the actual texture in the soup, which I've got a bag of fresh peas. Okay, garlic and onion for when our bacon is ready. Eh. I'm not a huge avocado fan either. Um, like I stated last year and still with it. Uh, I sat there and watched a lady outside of a supermarket last year. Uh, just eating a raw avocado straight with the spoon. I was like, it's just too much for me. Uh, I like some avocado, especially with like Mexican style dishes, but uh, to just eat it straight, it's it's like chewing on butter to me. It's, it's all, it may be good fat, but it's all fat. Yeah, I love guacamole too. What's your question, car guy?
Yeah, they're good fat, but yeah. I mean, that's why you have, like, avocados in place of butter all over the place. Lentils, car guy? These are dried lentils. But they're going to cook and swallow up much like rice would or beans. But they're essentially like dried legumes, so like dried peas. I think they're a little small for lily pads, but they're nice little round uh, nice little round they're almost like pearl like but they're a little uh, they got a edge to them. So I've turned this up to just over what a boil temp would be. So we should start getting some more browning going on here now. We're going to have to pull these out and then put them back in here later, but... I didn't see that car guy, yeah. Well, I'm drinking this, so cheers, guys. It's a can of uh, flavored uh, Herba Mate. Little late evening caffeine jolt to go with our long day. I did a lot today, and there's a reason that I was late today. Why is that scrolled down like that? I don't want that. See what we get for a scramble word this time. couple lentils tonight for the soup. Yes, I do recognize that emote car guy.
Hello, everyone. Welcome in. Thank you for that raid. How is everyone? Oops. Got a couple on the board here. Those are actually looking a little bit cooler now that I've got them out of the bag there. They got a little spotting to them that I like. I thought they were just ugly in the back, <laughs> but I wanted green lentils. So what were we uh, cooking earlier here, Rusty? <laughs> Excuse me. Wow. All choked up. All these people. <laughs> Well, welcome in, everyone. Hi, I'm Jason, if you're not familiar with me. I cook here three nights a week normally. I'm starting off this year by doing the first eight days straight. I uh, got started a little bit later than I usually do. I get normally get started at 4.30 Pacific. Started tonight at 5.30. Uh, I had an appointment, some other things keeping me going. And so we're doing, just getting started here, I'm making some... Lardons on the stove. We've got some home cured belly in there. And uh, once we get that all nice and crispy and rendered, I'm going to start in on our next stuff here. Add our onions and our garlic. Get our lentils going with that with some chicken stock. Yep, it would be frisée lettuce. I do have a bot doing a scramble every couple of minutes and they're all international words so they're multiple languages but they're all somewhat food related um so that would be frisee lettuce um and it's free to join but you have to type scramble at the exclamation mark scramble at the right point to join in uh i'm sorry did did I catch what you did today, Rusty? And thank you for that raid. Thank you for that follow vanilla hush. So we got some green lentils here, which like I was saying, I'm actually sort of surprised. Focus. There we go. Actually have some neat speckling to them. Tonight I'm going to be doing the lentil and pea soup. I've got um, some garlic bread that I made yesterday. This is the leftovers from the garlic bread. I'm going to use that to make a sandwich tonight. And some croutons for with our soup. The check-in is for sprinkles. I host uh, giveaways. Uh, well, actually, the first one here is going to be when we get to 500 follows, which I'm, I believe, three away from now. Um, and so if we get 500 follows on Wednesday, we'll have a giveaway for a $25 gift card. And uh, the uh, sprinkles is the way you'll be able to join in on that because it's a chat currency that doesn't take into account any money in any form so we don't get any trouble with state laws purely based on viewership and interaction and all that good stuff and thank you food trucking and welcome in How are you doing tonight, Grandma Jules? Let's get a little...
to get there with our Lardons. Actually, I have one of those shirts that says Bacon gives me a lard on. <laughs> Make sure we don't get any there. All staying on the same side the entire time. Thanks for stopping by, Grandma Jules. So I'm not doing any wine tonight. Um, I do have a couple of bottles here, but... And for anyone else new in here, or not following my Twitter account, uh, or in the Discord, uh, tomorrow, going to be doing my ingredient challenge tomorrow. I have weekly... Uh, ingredient challenges on Wednesdays hold uh, weekly votes in the discord and so this week KFC extra crispy chicken won and so I have to use KFC extra crispy chicken both for the savory and sweet parts of dinner uh, tomorrow night so that's gonna be interesting meal um, I think I've got the dessert pretty much figured out. Haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do for the dinner. But I mean, obviously, I'm not just going to do fried chicken. <coughs> uh, it's been interesting doing the ingredient challenges this week. What, 13 or 14 or something like that? I've done last week was crickets, which was a little bit out there. Um, done Twinkies. Uh, Pocky, After 8 Dinner Mints, Popcorn, a uh, whole bunch of different things. So it's been a lot of fun. And I've gotten to try a couple of things that I wouldn't have tried otherwise. And So I've been enjoying it, even though it's maybe not my gut so much enjoying it. Lardons off onto some paper towel. I'm gonna use this pan over here for making my sandwich later, so I'm gonna take some of the rendered fat here and put it in that pan too.
making sure to wipe off the side and the rim here and make sure we don't got flames tracing up the bottom here after doing that. Thank you for that follow, Jay Crux. <laughs> It'll be nice. Especially after, well, not restarting, but certainly being set back by Microsoft. Well, there we go. Thank you, guys. And that's now... 500, 501. Nice, thank you, Food Truck King. Bless Miss Betty, Superfly, Net Frost, uh, Slippest Nights. Thank you for the follows. Thank you. And so, yes, we'll be having a giveaway on Wednesday. And if any of you guys check that click check-in button after you sit here for a couple minutes, uh, you might have enough points to join in. We'll see. Uh, so we're doing lentil soup. Just pulled the bacon lardons off of the stove. And we're going to start in with our garlic and onion. We need a bit of a better flame there now. Start with our garlic and pretty much immediately go to our onion. Thank you for that follow, Superfly14. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Okay, we got that going. Once we get some color on that going, we'll add in our homemade chicken stock here. Made back in October. bit of salt. Little MSG. Black pepper. Yeah, I, well, I don't know so much. I love cooking red onion. I don't know about cast iron being special, but I do love me some cast iron, too. Uh, we did have four fine pieces on the stove here. And uh, I also got earlier, as a holiday gift, haven't quite broken it in yet either. We used it once for tortillas, but I now have this guy too to cover up two burners, both with a grill pest side and a griddle side. And battle time! Let's take a look at our veggies here quick first.
And so, Stream Raiders battle. See how we do. Hopefully a bit better this time around. We got this. One last blob. Victory. Metro with the kills. QNS2 with the assist. Nice, Leo. So we're starting to get some nice color here with our onions and garlic. I want to let that go actually a little bit longer. You make your own basalmic, Grandma Jules? That's something that takes quite a bit of work from my understanding. I don't know how they do the more commercial ones, but the old school real basalmic, that's like family heritage stuff there. Actually, surprised this is cooking this slowly at this temp. I'm gonna get my chicken stock here ready to go. So it's a pound and a half of stock, 24 ounces or so. And we'll add our lentils. <laughs> Leo. Uh, I mean, all you have to do is look at the chat rules, man.
Be right back, gonna throw these out. Actually, I can toss these in this just like one. So that's gonna need 25 minutes or so here. In the meantime, let's do a uh, crouton up here on the other. Oops. Well, we'll do the board for right now. Um, in the other pan there. So we got our garlic infused bread. This is a no need dough that was made with some garlic in there. And uh, basically, when I mixed it up initially, I took a couple tablespoons of olive oil and simmered, not boiled, not not toasted, but cooked the and infused garlic into the oil and then mix that in with the no need dough recipe. And so we'll make a couple slices for our sandwich tonight. We'll set those aside and then this will take the crusty end, save that for munchy time. And then how do I want to do this? <laughs> I actually just sort of want to take the crust off of it, make it into a square. We got our two croutons there. <laughs> yeah, sushi isn't necessarily very, I mean, it's one of those sort of like deceptive foods. I mean, it just like disappears. So we got a flame going on this second stout, second burner over here now. Over on this guy. We're warm that up. This is some of the rendered fat from the pork belly. So the plan of action here is this is we're going to bring up to a heat and we're going to cook it until the lentils are cooked and then we're going to give it a puree. We'll add in our peas whole and our bacon back in there and that'll be a done deal. And we'll be wrapping up the sandwich around then too. You don't have to apologize to me, you should apologize to yourself tomorrow morning. You've been fine. Hey, Miss Lisa Face, how you doing tonight? I actually pondered making head cheese when I bought that pig because I had the option to buy the head and the offal. I chose not to because I didn't think I was going to be able to get to all of it. But uh, head cheese is something that I wouldn't mind trying making at some point. That That's quite the undertaking though. That's, I mean... That's going to be, I think they're usually about that big when you finish them, you know, like that far off the cutting board sort of a thing.
No, oh, that's not good, Miss Lisa Face. I've been busy all day too. I'll turn the heat down on that now. Since those are obviously gonna cook nice and quick that way. We'll pull out the mini tongs. Essentially gonna be like frying these guys in the bacon fat. I did miss Lisa Face. Got a lot done today. Don't want to go too far because they are going to carry over cook, and so I'd rather send them back for a second run than have them be too dark the first time. As you can see, there is some color going on there with them. We are going to have to add more water in with these lentils. We're going to need about a cup more water, I think, in here. But I want them to absorb all that chicken stock. Yep, that's flavor. It's not all the flavor, but it certainly does a good job of, trans of uh, transporting it. It's a great medium for transporting flavor. Let's add another cup of water in here so we're the right amount of water in the or liquid in the pot. Nice, Huberman. Almost done with those croutons. Those are going to be gorgeous. Perfect for the Instagrams. And while we're at it, that'll just be good for the noms. Be there yet, croutons?
nice, Miss Lisa Face. A latte with espresso coffee. Aren't all lattes with espresso? Miss Lisa Face, I think you definitely need to start doing a lot more creative work right this second. No rest. Okay, Hooverman. That's one way to go about that. Sorry, I don't understand. Yeah, I know you don't understand. I wasn't talking to you. So we'll take our croutons, which are looking nice and toasty golden brown. Set those over here with the bag. A crumble with the crust. With this? I've done crumbles before. I don't really have any fruit or anything to do with it. It's not exactly summertime. I am not exactly stocked up on all that sort of stuff. I do have a couple lemons that I could grab, but I don't know if I'm really feeling Lemon, cr lemon crumble. <laughs> yeah, I'd agree. Lattes are... I'd get in trouble with people here in the U.S., but Italians will strongly tell you it's a kitty drink. It doesn't have any caffeine. It's just foamed milk for the most part. I'm not saying they aren't tasty. They do have a nice, I mean the foam is, they're Okay, we got that goodness for later. Let's toast up our other two pieces of bacon here. I wasn't worried about splashing that to me, but I should have laid that in the pan the other direction. You always want to put things in oil away from you. That way when they fall down, even unexpectedly or expectedly, they're splashing that way, not this way. No line tonight, Miss Lisa Face. Uh, I sort of got going late, and so I wanted to plan a dinner that didn't really go there. We'll probably do wine actually tomorrow night with the uh, fried chicken dinner tomorrow. Even though it's not going to be fried chicken for dinner, it's going to be a fried chicken dinner.
Oh yeah, lattes got espresso in it, but it's typically only like one shot of espresso with a bunch of steamed milk. Oh, they're a good time, but I don't really do much coffee anymore. And that includes lattes. Just don't really enjoy the acid on my stomach early in the morning anymore. Um, I've actually almost completely stopped drinking coffee and do a lot more urban mate these days as far as caffeine and that stuff. <laughs> yeah green tea is good I, I enjoy some uh, like that's sort of like my summer cool down drink actually oddly as it is because it's, it's slightly bitter but uh, unsweetened ice green tea is like I go out for a walk and peak summer that's what I'm probably going to drink Now I'm toying with playing playing games, moving these around to try and get them cooked all the way around in the right places. I'm worried about this little corner here and this guy in the very center of this piece over here isn't going to do as well as the outsides. And this guy, I'm worried about the big hunk of fat up here on the top. Though I could just chop that off on both of these. I think we're calling you done. Don't want to drip bacon fat all over the place. Good way to start a fire. Those are looking nice. Pishy tea. Hmm. I doubt that's a compliment for the tea.
I'm lost on that one. No, don't have that in there for it. There you go. I don't think I added any salt into that after I added the lentils and all that. Good to take the heat off of there. We need some salt in there for the lentils and for that stock, because there's flavor in that stock, but it's not huge. There's salt in that stock, but it's not hugely salted. Debating if I want to get into doing our bread yet or not. Hmm. Yeah, why not? Oh, we got a puree of the soup first, anyways. Because I don't want a puree of the soup when I'm worried about oil over here. Also, I want to check this. See uh, how well this covers this in case of emergency. That might work. Be at least a good start. Uberman. I have not been to Pompano. Nor Scotland. Or Essex. I've not been anywhere in Europe. I have spent the vast majority of my life here in the United States, in the continental United States. And, uh, but I have traveled to Canada and uh, China. Okay. I hardly ever use this guy. And he has most certainly seen better days. We're hoping he even works. Let's see what we got. It works. Would not be surprised, Miss Lisa Face. I have seen some gorgeous videos on scotch. If you like scotch, there's a great documentary on it on Amazon. Actually, maybe won't. We'll, maybe we should do a watch party with that. Yeah, I could do a watch party with that. Maybe that's what we'll do here one of these off days here in the next couple of days here once we finish the first eight days of the year and go back to our normal schedule. Normal schedule being up, up over there. Fridays, Sundays, Wednesdays, 4.30 Pacific.
Yeah, there's a... I'd like to catch a flight right now. But, uh... Yeah. Actually, I was thinking the other day, I wouldn't mind visiting, uh... Both Hong Kong and Singapore. Hong Kong maybe when politics is a little bit quieter. Battle time! See how we fare here. Rogues are taking it. Oh, what are these little, like, tank car things? Artillery cannons? Wow. It's like a little, uh, SimCity in, uh, Stream Raiders. Ugh, this is gonna take forever if we don't have those ro if those rogues are all dead. Wow. I don't know if we have this. Even with the two healers. Wow. No. I think I'm putting my rogue out there this time. Glingoin. Oops. Neckwurst. Like Knockwurst, but with an A. Knockwurst. Not quite there with the lentils. Need a little bit longer with them. Packaging says 25 minutes. I thought it was closer to 30 to 40. Nice, Miss Elisa Face. Yeah, it'd be nice to meet some people from streaming. I, I unfortunately, uh, essentially started at the perfect time to, uh, miss all of the conventions. <laughs> um, I started up and we had the 2019 conventions and I was just getting going. I wasn't going to go out and do conventions. And, uh, then, uh, COVID hits, and so now all the conventions are canceled. Nice, Leo. Went to uh, culinary school with a proud Puerto Rican who uh, introduced me to some of the cuisine. Very interesting, as with many things with Puerto Rico. 
sort of hope they get the chance to be a state at some point here. Otherwise, I don't know what the result there was with the whether they were going to be taxed or not. Or, I don't remember all of it. Let's see what our bottom crust is like. Bit hard and crispy. <laughs> Tasty though. And give the lentils a try. So they're small little orb-like things. As I was saying before, you got some onion on there too, but the lentils, they don't change in size a ton. They may be doubled. A lot of flavor there. Wow. Um, I think we're okay to puree those. So let's start to stick one We'll see if this is too loud for the mic or not. Uh, it's relatively. So we're not gonna completely get rid of the texture here, but we are gonna liquefy most of this. I'm going up and down, I'm bouncing this up and down because otherwise the the blade is all up in the top part here. And so I have to get the guard up and down over what I'm There we go. Now we got that thick enough that it's splattering all over the place. Okay. Unplug you, give you a good rinse off. I turn the heat off on the lentils. Just because they were bubbling so much, I didn't want them to keep splattering all over into the oil and stuff. But you can see now, I'm trying to bring these up close to the camera here. We still have some of the texture there. We still have some of the lentils in there. But uh, majority of them are now much smoother pureed. Now we'll add our bacon back in. Oops. Maybe that needs another minute to cool down here. We'll add the bacon in there because that'll cool it down temporarily as the bacon's been chilling over here. Catching up on chat here. I don't know if I really, I mean, I really want to see Ireland and, and Scotland for the beauty, but uh, I don't know if the booze is really, I'm, I'm more of a whiskey bourbon guy than just to love over and swoon over uh, Pete. 
Here in California, we're under indefinite lockdown. Yeah, but your beers are also better served at room temp compared to what we have around here. Toast up our bread here and some of that bacon dripping. And put our bacon over here on the board for making our sandwich later. We got our croutons for later. Those turned out great. I'm definitely going to check the news after tonight. That was tonight's the... Uh, well, let's not get talking about politics, but it's a big politics night here in the States. Sorry, I'm not showing you cooking the bread over here. Yep, I live in Northern Cal- I'm not from California. I'm from the Midwest, but uh, I live in Sonoma County, California these days. Wine country. Food country. Some people think we're a part of the Bay Area. Maybe in some legal jargon, but San Fran's a good hour and a half away from me. as a garnish. I think he'll be good for a garnish. Thank you for the follow, White Wolf. Welcome in. in there right now. Let that cook in with that. Try and not forget about our bread that we're burning. So I know what side I'm putting down. 
But they're not burnt burnt. is off there. Those are going to be pretty. Yeah, they got a little burn at the top there. A little bit on the edge there. A little bit on the edge there, but I ain't worried about that little bit. That's just flavor. in there too. So this is just some time giving our lentil soup some time. And I need some florets for the actually that's not bad right there, that little the curly cue. Okay. Are we there yet? Um, what else are we throwing in there? What am I forgetting that I'm throwing in there? I have to remember my avocado to do here too. Let's do the avocado right now. I'll use that on the bottom.
So we got our peas. Fresh shelled peas. Add that in with all that deliciousness. Those will turn bright green near instantly here. Well, maybe not near instantly, but they should brighten things up here nicely real quick. And we're doing our eggs over here. Hey, you were talking about that, Hooverman. I'm just going to do sunny side up egg, egg, eggs here for my sandwich. That ought to be good, just two of them. Hit them with a little salt, a little fresh cracked pepper. Heat off on that, let the pan finish them off. Take our pea and lentil. And bacon soup. You can thin that out if you want. I'm okay with it being a bit too thick. This is too thick for a soup. I'm okay with that. Fresh cracked pepper and salt. We got our sunny side up, up eggs. Ever so lightly stuck together there. So there is dinner. Done you 
using the knife tonight anyways. Take these out of the background. Don't want to go too picture, huh? Crazy, but there we go. So photos up on the Discord and Instagram. No, actually, not on Instagram tonight because we're doing so many this week. It'll be up on Twitter and and uh, Discord uh, tomorrow night. Gonna be doing. KFC chicken as an ingredient and we'll be continuing our first week of straight streaming up until the 8th. Um, let's see who we can give a raid to tonight and share some love with here. Uh, thank you guys for joining me tonight. I will be back here tomorrow as I said. Besides I gotta do something else with the rest of that lentils. Um, oh, this is a wonderful one. <laughs> Let's go celebrate. Let's go have some fun tonight. I think she's doing a game stream. But she's also a great food uh, and drink streamer here. She's celebrating her birthday. So let's go say hi to her. Give you guys a quick parting shot of our dinner from the main screen. Hopefully not spilling it all over the place here. We have our soup and our sandwich there. I hope to see you guys back tomorrow for the chicken. Should be an interesting night. I have plans already. Don't have it all figured out, but I think dessert's going to be an interesting one at least. Uh, thank you guys. Have a great night.